Hey guys, welcome to your third Godot tutorial. So as I mentioned last time, in Godot, the two most fundamental concepts are scenes and nodes. Last tutorial we covered nodes, this tutorial we're going to cover scenes. So if you recall, I said that a Godot game simply consists of a bunch of scenes. So what is a scene? A scene, in turn, simply consists of a bunch of nodes and other scenes arranged in a hierarchy. So there is a parent-child relationship. Here are some important things about scenes. So as I mentioned, they consist of nodes and other scenes arranged in a hierarchy. Here's a key thing to remember. A scene has one and only one root node. So although it can have many nodes and scenes inside of it, it must have one root node and it can only have one root node. All the other nodes and scenes have to be nested. You'll see that. A scene's information is saved to a file, and then when you want to uh, use that file, when you want to create instances of, instances of that scene, there's a two-step process. One, you use the gd.load function, you pass it the path to your scene file. This will return to you an object of packed scene type. And then you call the instance method of that object that will create an actual instance of the scene and return it to you. One little side note, the type of the scene is the same as the type of its root node. Let's go ahead and just uh, create a little project and mess around with this a little bit. So as always, go ahead and create a folder on your desktop for the project. I'm going to call this tutorial 3. Launch Godot. Click on New Project, choose a title, choose that folder that we created on the desktop, and choose OpenGL3, Create and Edit. Okay, go to the 2D Scene Editor, and it has already created an empty scene for us by default. This is not saved. Um, if you wanted to create your own scene, you would go to Scene, and then new scene, just like that. So we'll exit this one and keep our newly created one. So this is what a scene is. This shows you visually uh, what it looks like. We have nothing in this scene. And on the left, you see hierarchically what's in the scene. There's nothing right now. So to add a root node, remember you can only have one and, and you must have one root uh, node in your scene. So we're gonna click this little button to add a node. And here's all the types of the uh, nodes that we have. I'm going to search for sprite, which is what we've been using. And again, the sprite node is useful for when you just want to display a little graphic. So choose that. Just double click it. And now you can see in your scene hierarchy, which shows you what nodes and other scenes you have uh, inside this scene. We see that we have one and only one root node, a sprite node. Let's go ahead and assign a picture to the texture property of this sprite node. There it is. Okay. Now let's add a script to this uh, sprite node. Uh, we're going to right click it and click on attach script. So we're going to make sure that we're choosing a C sharp script. And I'm going to just name it sprite.cs. I'm going to just leave that at the root. So click create. And there we go. Okay, now I'm going to uh, use VS Code to do all my text editing, so minimize that. Launch VS Code. Okay, I got myself VS Code here. Just drag your folder onto it. That opens it up. Let's open up this sprite.cs. Okay, so what I've done here is I just cleaned up the little default generated code. Um, and the plan here is I want this sprite to move randomly every uh, frame basically so it's just going to jitter around so i'm going to create uh, i'm going to generate a random integer that's going to be basically zero to three so it has four possible values and depending on that value i'm going to move them in a uh, basically different directions okay so i'm going to write all of this code down and then i'll explain it to you afterwards okay so let's see what we've done here. Um, <clears throat> we know that the process method of a node 
uh, this gets called every frame, right? So this is constantly going to get called. Uh, and what we do is we generate a random number. This gd.randi will return a random number between 0 and the largest number that can fit into an unsigned integer, so some big number. Then we're going to modulus that with 4, which means divide it by 4 and give me the remainder. When you divide something by 4, you're either going to have a remainder of 0, 1, 2, or 3. So essentially, we're going to get a number 0 to 3 will be assigned to this random number. That's what we're doing. I set this little constant up here to 5. That's how much we want to move by. So if that random number is 0, we move up. If it's 1, we move down. If it's 2, we move left. If it's 3, we move right. So you can imagine that this thing is just going to jitter around. It's going to move around randomly. Okay, so we've done that. Let's uh, put one of those things in there and see it move around. So I'm going to minimize this, go in here, and we have an instance of this right here. Now we're going to save this scene. So if you try to play the scene, remember, it'll ask you to save it. I'll save it just as Sprite in, in the root of our project. Save it. <clears throat> okay, it's launching. See? <laughs> it's just kind of jittering around. Okay, now we have that. What I want to do next is create another scene, and then I want to create a bunch of these jittery scenes inside my other scene. So you can a shortcut to create a scene is also this little plus button. Alternatively, you can go to Scene, New Scene. I just like clicking that little plus button. So we have a new empty scene, and in the root of it, I'm just going to add a node 2D. I like putting these. Uh, a node 2D doesn't really provide any specific functionality. I like putting them uh, in uh, scenes like a world scene, things like that. So we'll put that up here. So we have a new scene with the root node 2D node. And now I want to create add a child um, scene. So if you right click and do the add child node, you will have to only pick from one of Godot's built in nodes. We don't want to add a child node. We want to add a child scene. So if you remember, right, a scene hierarchy consists of nodes and scenes. So uh, I can right click this and then uh, I can, well, actually, I can't right click it. But if you select it and click this little chain button, then you can add a, a scene as a child. So we're going to choose our sprite scene. And now that's a child of our world uh, world scene let's go ahead and save our world scene because you see it's unsaved so i'm just going to press Control s i hope yeah that did it i'm going to call it world so world dot save that okay so we have a sprite scene and then we have a world scene key thing to remember in our sprite scene what's our root node it's of type sprite and the name of the node is also called sprite. Just remember that. So in our world, world scene, we placed one child, uh, this little thing. So if we launch our world, we should get the same exact thing. That little thing jitting around. But now the cool thing is, is I can click on this again and add a new scene as a child. So again, I want to add a sprite scene. So we have two of those now, and if I launch the world scene, we got two of these things jittering around. And just to show you again, select the root node in the world scene, click on this little chain to add a child uh, scene to the scene, and this dialog lets you select which scene you want to add as a child. I want to add the sprite scene, and there we go, it added another one. Let me put this one down here let's launch this and there's three little things jittering around okay I want to show you how to do this uh, via code so how do you encode create one a scene right because scene like the sprite scene we saved it to a file now if in code I wanted to create an instance of this scene how would I do it so let's go ahead and do that right over here Okay, so what we want to do now is whenever uh, the user clicks, we want to create an instance of the sprite scene. So go ahead and go to the world scene. Um, oh, we don't have a world script. That's because we didn't add one. So go to your Godot editor. Make sure you're in your world scene. Uh, right, click on your root node. 
in the world scene and we're going to attach a script to the root node. Okay, make sure it's C sharp and I'm just going to call it world.cs. Create, I'm going to go to my VS code, world.cs. Let me clean up this junk that it generated. And format. Nice. Okay. So, um, now real quick, I'm going to go over how you can respond to a mouse event here and later tutorials. We're going to cover in depth how the uh, event system works. It's it's not really that complex, but it really deserves its own video or half a video. Um, but for now, I'll just let you know that every uh, node has a method called unhandled input and any unhandled mouse and keyboard events will go there. So you can just trust me that this will work for now. If you uh, so create a method called unhandled input public override void unhandled input and any mouse events will come here so when they click on the world it will basically come over here what do we want to do here is we want to uh, first check if it's a mouse if this event is a mouse click because this could also be a keyboard press and a joystick press etc so if at event uh, is input event mouse button then we want to create instance of sprite scene that's what we want to do in order to do that we first have to load if you recall from the PowerPoint presentation we first have to load the scene file into a packed scene object so let's create a packed scene object here we'll do We'll just call it pack scene for a lack of creativity. Okay. And in the ready method, if you recall from the previous tutorial, this method is called uh, basically as soon as the world appears. It's kind of like a constructor. You can think of it that way, but technically it's called when the world enters the, you know, the scene tree. Okay. So I know some of you will be confused about that. So let me explain that really quick. What we have here is we have two of our own scenes. We have a scene called world. We have a scene called sprite, right? We're creating instance of our sprite scene inside our world scene. So clearly these sprite scenes, right? They're going to be entering the world scene. But also what you don't know is that this world scene, when we launch it, it enters like a global scene. So what I'm trying to get at is that this, this uh, ready method of the world scene will be called when it enters the global scene. If that didn't make too much sense right now, it's okay. Just think of the ready method as a constructor, almost. Okay, so as soon as the world is created, we want to use gd.load to load our um, sprite.res sprite dot TSCN. Yep, let's see if that's uh, correct. Yes, yeah, write that TSCN. So the load method takes a path to the scene and it returns you a packed scene. So we're going to assign that. And I just have to cast it. Uh, do they have that? No. So cast it to a packed scene. There we go. So that's assigned. And now once we have the packed scene, so we loaded the scene file into a packed scene object. And now whenever the mouse is clicked, we want to call packed scene dot instance. And that will return, that will create and return an instance of the scene. So what type of variable should we assign that to? Well, if you remember from the PowerPoint, I said that the type of a scene is the same as the type of its root node. So in our sprite scene, what is the type of its root node? That is a sprite, confusingly. All right, so we'll do uh, we'll do sprite. All right, so pack scene dot instance, and we know that that is a sprite, so we will cast it. All right, so we created a sprite, and now we will do sprite dot position is equal to mouse event dot 
position. Let's see how that works out. Why is this not? Oh, that's not a method. That's just a property. OK, so let's quickly review here. As soon as our world, world is created, as soon as it enters the global scene tree, more specifically, we use the gd.load function to load our scene file into a packed scene object. And then whenever the user clicks somewhere, we use the packed scene to instantiate an instance of our scene, the sprite scene. And then we set the position of our scene to the uh, basically the position of the click. All right. Now let's run this really quick and see if it works. So world, we're going to save it. We're going to launch it. All right, those three are there. Now I want to create one here. Okay, nothing happens. Let's see why. Well, here's a chance for you guys to learn a little bit of debugging. First, I want to see if this, if we even reach this spot here. So we're going to do gd.print. We're going to say reached um, uh, event callback. So this is the mouse event. I want to see if even if that even gets reached. So run the scene again. Oh, yeah, it is. See? So that is being reached. All right. Now, let's remove that. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. Um, I did not, I created an instance of our sprite scene, but I didn't add it anywhere. So when you, inst when you create an instance of it, you have to add it as a child of your world scene. So let's do that. So we're going to this dot add child. So you can use the add child method to add a child uh, node or scene. So we're going to add the sprite as a child of the world, which makes sense because we're adding the sprite to the world. And there we go. See that? So the reason why it creates two is because it creates one on the mouse press, and then it creates one on the mouse release. <laughs> but there it is. Uh, that's it for this tutorial. Um, I'm not sure what we'll cover in the next tutorial, but I'm sure I'll come up with something fun. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.